Okay, I gotta keep talking. It's a triple, no, quadruple system. Oh, it's beautiful. Is there life beyond Earth? No one knows for sure. Thanks to NASA's Kepler mission's discovery of thousands of planets beyond our solar system, including some with key similarities to Earth. It's now possible to not just imagine the science fiction of finding life on other worlds, but to one day scientifically prove life exists beyond our solar system. In April 2018, New interest arose in Congress for NASA to begin supporting the scientific search for technosignatures as part of the agency's search for life. Technosignatures are signs or signals which, if observed, would allow us to infer the existence of technological life elsewhere in this universe. The best known technosignature are radio signals. For example, the Earth has an expanding bubble of man made radio signals expanding outward at the speed of light. The first ever transatlantic radio broadcast was in 1901, which means the Earth has a radio bubble or sphere of about 120 light years, which would cover many star systems. NASA placed a message aboard Voyager 1 and 2, a kind of time capsule intended to communicate a story of our world to extraterrestrials. English theoretical physicist and cosmologist Stephen Hawking thought this was a mistake he said it would be much better for humans to keep a low profile. There's a good chance we don't want aliens to come calling, because they very likely wouldn't be the cuddly E.T. types we hope for. If aliens visit us, the outcome would be much as when Columbus landed in America, which didn't turn out well for the Native Americans. I would say that the Stephen Hawking argument assumes that aliens will behave the way we know we would treat one another, using we as an example for they. But, so he's basing it on a mirror to human conduct. So it's not on actual knowledge of what, how aliens would behave, it's on, on, on actual knowledge of how humans would behave. And maybe we should give aliens higher credit for conduct than we give ourselves. Debate about the probability of finding signals of advanced life varies widely. In 1961, astronomer Frank Drake created a formula which became known as the Drake Equation for estimating the number of potential intelligent civilizations in the galaxy. He calculated there should be at least 10,000 technology-producing civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy alone. Most of the variables in the equation continue to be rough estimates and subject to uncertainties. But an interesting conundrum to Drake's speculative answer for the number of intelligent civilizations is the Fermi paradox. Posited by Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, it asserts that if another intelligent life form was indeed out there, why have we not seen it by now? If there's intelligent life everywhere, vastly more intelligent than we, presumably they might have figured out how to travel through the galaxy and get wormholes, whatever. And they, why aren't they here? Why haven't they visited us? Why haven't they taken over the galaxy? So one argument is that the very behavior trait that would have you want to acquire territory is intrinsically self-destructive. Because to want to say, I want to put my people in more places in the galaxy, if that's the attitude your species has, then other people that you put there are gonna have that very same attitude and they're going to want to do what you're doing. Everybody's going to want to do what you're doing. And you know what happens? You're going to end up fighting about it. And so it may be that the very character trait that would have you take over the galaxy and visit every planet is the one that would prevent you from getting there because you would have killed each other in the act of trying to make that happen. So that that trait is self-limiting. While it might seem as extreme hubris to expect humans to see evidence for the existence of intelligent alien life, considering how many star systems there are in our galaxy alone, and if indeed intelligent life is prevalent, we should expect to see some sort of data from alien origin. However, a new study published in the Astronomical Journal suggests another possibility. 
The Milky Way could be teeming with interstellar alien civilizations, but we just don't know about it because they haven't paid us a visit in 10 million years. It posits that intelligent extraterrestrial life could be taking its time to explore the galaxy, harnessing star system's movements to make star hopping easier. Another hypothesis that explains the Fermi problem is the Great Filter, which basically poses that something leads to the destruction of civilizations before they manage to master intergalactic communication and interstellar travel. Even if we knew for certain the Great Filter is a correct theory, we still wouldn't know when or at what stage of life it emerges. For example, a Great Filter could be acting to prevent non-living matter to undergo abiogenesis which is the first stage of life. Or, a great filter could show up in later stages of life, such as our stage where intelligent beings begin to create technology and hope to one day colonize the galaxy. The great filter hypothesis is not meant to suggest there is a single common cause for the end of other civilizations. It could be a combination of several different causes. One potential filter would be if another civilization's expansion was cut short by self-destruction, perhaps through nuclear war or accidental release of nanotechnology. Another filter would be if they encountered an unexpected astronomical event such as an asteroid collision, gamma ray burst, supernova, or the efflux of an adjacent quasar. An extraterrestrial war is another suspected cause. If a great filter is in the later stages of life, one, it would mean that our civilization has yet to encounter an extinction-level event that will most likely destroy us, and our chances for galactic colonization are slim to none. And second, it would mean that intelligent life in the universe is extremely rare, even if life in general is prevalent. If, by our own definitions, we are the only intelligent species there ever was on Earth, the dolphins are not building spaceships, so let's just assume this for the moment. For purposes of this point, let's define humans as the only intelligent species there ever was on Earth. Now you can ask, how many total species have there been? And when did intelligence, as we've come to define it, arise? Both of these numbers argue strongly against the high frequency of intelligence in any biota that we might find. So mammals, which we generally might add more than humans as being intelligent, very late in the evolutionary tree. The primates, later in the evolutionary tree. Humans, the latest few hundred thousand years in the evolutionary tree. And we've got four billion years of life. If you take a dart and throw it at that timeline randomly and ask, how often are you hitting an intelligent species? It's hardly ever. So now put planets and scatter them into the galaxy and have life begin at random times on them, then you come upon them at whatever is their timeline of their evolutionary tree, what are the chances you're hitting intelligence? If Earth is any example, it's hardly ever, even if the galaxy is teeming with life. A growing number of scientists and public thinkers are beginning to label the advent of digital superintelligence as the biggest existential risk to humanity. Elon Musk thinks that superhuman AI is by far worse than nuclear weapons. If humanity becomes extinct from AI, by far the worst case scenario would be if the machines that replace us are extremely intelligent but unconscious systems therefore have a complete lack of curiosity to explore the solar system and beyond. And perhaps this is the ultimate great filter for life and the explanation for the Fermi paradox. However, this is a hypothesis on top of a hypothesis. Even though science-based, every explanation to the Fermi problem remains speculative and should be taken with a grain of salt. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell to never miss videos like this.